What if you clicked on this video and I just started showing you how to make meth? Hello, I'm Alex and I'm assuming you're here to learn how to make this sweater, the Marceline Cat sweater from Adventure Time. I did not follow a pattern for this sweater and this was actually my first time ever crocheting a sweater so this was definitely a learning experience for me. That being said, because I learned, I can guide you in the right direction so that you do not make the same mistakes that I have. But I will also link down below a bunch of the videos that I watched to teach me how to do stuff like the ribbing and like starting a sleeve and this, this little thing, which is actually called a graph gan for those of you that didn't know. I didn't know until I started this project, so um, I'll link down below all those different videos that helped me out because I did not know anything, so yeah. Why don't I just go ahead and show you what materials you'll need going into this project and then we'll go from there. What I used for this project was a six millimeter crochet hook. I use scissors and a yarn needle. I also use the Lions brand Pound of Love yarn, as you can see for the majority of this project. This is what I have left. I used an entire loaf of the gray and this I only used about a third of the red. You're also gonna need black and yellow for the eyes of the cat on the sweater. The first thing I did was create the ribbing for the sleeves and then I built the sleeves up from there. I would really recommend checking out a tutorial by The Snugglery, I'll link it below. It was incredibly helpful for creating a sleeve. The only thing that I did different from their tutorial was they used a linen stitch and I actually used the half double crochet stitch for my sleeves. This is what my ribbing looked like when I finished it the first time I tried to make it. It was a little bit too short. It was shorter than I wanted it to be so rather than just undoing it or throwing it away. I just used it to practice attaching the gray to the sleeve. That way I would know how large I wanted the first initial row of the gray to be on my actual sleeve. For those of you who are good at counting and remembering your numbers, I would definitely recommend doing that just because um, if you can see here, I didn't count for my ribbing. I thought I counted I didn't obviously um, so they're a little bit different like not that noticeably different but a little bit and then also the width of them was a little different and I found this out the hard way because I <laughs> I made the second when I started on my second sleeve it was really wide like it was way wider than the first sleeve so I had to take it like all apart and start over and do it again so definitely try to count a little bit just so it's roughly the same it's not going to be noticeable if it's identical or not but if it's roughly the same size it'll be easier for you for the length of the sleeves i had it go up to just underneath my shoulder because i made the panels for the sweater really wide it's pretty boxy so you don't want the sleeves to be too long going all the way up and over your shoulders it only needs to be like where a t-shirt would cut off sort of on your arm. I did not count these rows. I think when I was making the second sleeve, I just kept stacking it on top of the first one to make sure that they were the same width of red so that the band was approximately the same. Anyway, moving on to the panels now. For this, I just made a really long chain and then I used a sweater that I have I think it's from Forever 21. It's pretty old, but that does not matter. Anyway, um, I just measured the length of the chain on the width of the sweater because I like how that sweater fits. So I just copied it like a girl boss. Also, I forgot to mention this before, but when making your foundation chain for both of the panels, make sure you don't stretch the chain. Just lay it flat on whatever garment of clothing that you're using as a reference or if you're just holding it up to yourself because if you pull it tight it will be different in the final product than it would be if you just let it lay flat. Also just 
something to note the ribbing is very stretchy like that will have some stretch to it but for the actual body of the sweater and the sleeves just make sure that you're not making them too tight because it stretches a little but not very much because it's just a bunch of knots so if you want to make it tighter like you know just know that margin isn't as giving as forgiving as with the ribbing this is what the back panel looked like when I finished it for the back panel I used the double crochet stitch since I knew that I didn't have to add the pattern onto it and then I added a row of half sorry of double crochet stitches on either side to create a little bit of a hole for where the head would go it's just a little bit of a square that way I would know where to attach the shoulders moving on to how I created the cat design that appears on the front panel of the sweater for this I use the software stitch fiddle it's super easy to work with you just upload any image it can be a drawing it can be a picture from the internet and it will turn that image into a pixelated form basically how this is it'll just put it into a graph and then you can mess around with the design and input colors where you want them to go and each square on the graph represents a knot in the sweater so if you start from the bottom up that'll be your first row second row third row so on and so forth this isn't the actual graph that I ended up using in the final product because as you can see there are a ton of squares on this one and the design would have been much bigger than I would have liked so I ended up making quite a few different graphs I can attach the final graph that I used down below but if you would like to know how this process works it's basically just as you see what I'm doing here just inputting different colors and seeing what works best playing around with it until you get the look that you like when I was trying to find the placement of the cat on my sweater what I did was I when I initially made my chain I counted how many rows across but it doesn't really matter wherever you are on the sweater you can just count on the top however many rows you have and then I divided that number in half I'm sorry to make you do math but I found the center of the sweater so for me because it was an even number I think it's a little off center but you don't have to know that um, so it was 47 was the center so 47 plus 47 is around 94 um, and then from there I just wherever that center point was I counted like that's one three five seven nine thir eleven thirteen I hate counting I hate math I hate thinking oh my god anyway so whatever that initial row is just count out from the center point of the sweater and then wherever that ends off like if this row bottom row is 15 stitches if you count from the center 1 3 5 7 9 11 13 15 then mark wherever that 15th stitch is and then start there to go across when you're making your panel I hope that makes sense um, that was just the way that I did it so that the cat would be roughly in the center rather than trying to just guesstimate but you could probably guesstimate as well for the front panel I used a half double crochet stitch rather than a full double crochet stitch just because it would make the design the graph a little bit more detailed when attaching a color you want to make sure you have three loops on your hook and this goes for any color change throughout the project if you're using a half double crochet stitch it's also really important that you carry the gray with you when going across because once you finish your first row of red you're going to want to switch back to the gray until you get to the other side or until you inevit inevitably have to flip it over I would really recommend a tutorial by Nyler Taylor she does an excellent job of showing you how to crochet a graph gan and switch colors and implement this technique in a way that's really easy to understand that's how I sort of figured out what a graph gan was and how to do this I was cat sitting while I did this and the cats were freaking out they kept wanting to play with all of the yarn whenever I would have the yarn moving they would jump up I had to move them so many times it was so funny here is a little clip for how you complete the row of red 
your first row of the cat design. You want to make sure you have three loops of red on your hook, then pick up the gray and pull through. I did forget to carry the red yarn with me two spaces. You're gonna wanna make sure that you do that because I had to go back and undo a lot of my work. That way when you flip it over, you can start with the red in the next row. Moving on to where the mouth starts of this design, as you can see on my iPad, I have marked across all of the red rows and I am now at the point in my graph where I need to start attaching the black. You attach the black the same way as you do the red. Make sure that you start with three loops of red on your hook, pull the black through. However, I actually, you're gonna see in this clip, but I actually make a mistake. I know it's hard to believe, I'm just kidding. But I shouldn't have pulled this knot through right here because I'm only doing one knot of black before I switch back to red. So when you only have one knot of one color, you just, slip stitch the black onto your hook, start your half double crochet as you would any other half double crochet, but then instead of pulling through with the black, you're gonna pull through with the red again, and then go across, make sure you're carrying your black, your red, and your gray across, because you're going to have to use that in your next row. And then once again, with the black, it's the same thing as the red. You wanna carry the black all the way to the point of where your next stitch is going to be, not to the point of the end of the red. You don't wanna to have to carry it all the way around. You can just drop it wherever your next stitch is going to be in the following row. Also, when you're carrying the strings with you all the way across, you wanna pull them a little bit, but don't pull them too tight or it will warp your design. You wanna make sure they're just not piling up in the back. I hope all of this makes sense. I know it's kind of confusing and overwhelming and it does take a lot of trial and error, but I promise as you go, it gets a lot easier and it starts to make a lot more sense. It can seem overwhelming at first, but luckily crochet is very forgiving. If you make a mistake, you can just pull your knot out and then try it again and it will be no problem. So I believe in you, you can do this and it's gonna be worth it at the end when you have a wonderful piece of clothing. Moving on to attaching the yellow, as with all of the other colors in this project, you're gonna to wanna to start with three loops on your hook, then go ahead and attach the yellow with a slip knot and pull it through. I actually didn't follow my graph. I know the only reason it's there is to follow it, but I didn't like that the way it looked, I did this one row and then I did a second row of the yellow, the black after this, but then I ended up taking out that second row and only keeping the one row of the black and the yellow. Feel free to do this because it's your design so you can change it. And this part is definitely the most annoying because there are so many strings. Oh my God, it is so annoying. I literally kept fidgeting around with my fingers like this for so long. It's honestly, it's not even that it's hard, it's just extremely irritating. So take your time on this part of the process, you know, it's probably going to be the slowest point of this process, but in the end it's worth it, you know, the design will look sick, so just keep plugging away. Carry all of the strings with you, once again dropping each string wherever the last point is that they appear on the graph, so on and so forth. At this point, hopefully you get the gist of switching colors and how to follow the graph. Once again, you can always refer back to those other videos I mentioned before if you need a refresher course or if you wanna see a more in-depth tutorial of this process. I'm just gonna fast forward through this because I cannot subject myself to rewatching how annoying this entire process was anymore. I didn't really film this part too in depth, but for attaching the shoulders, the sides, the sleeves, I basically used a slip stitch all the way across 
in the same sort of way that you attach the ribbing, if you refer back to that video that I mentioned earlier on from the snugglery, they show you how to close the ribbing with a slip stitch. And that's basically what I did here. Just because it's very secure, you can do it with your crochet hook. Um, I didn't feel like looking up a tutorial, so I just freestyled it and it worked out. So you can do whatever method you would like. You can sew it. Just make sure when you're doing this that whatever part you would like to appear on the inside is on the outside. That way the clean seam, as you can see, is what shows once you flip it inside out. Here is me trying on the sweater with just the top parts attached. I wanted to make sure it fit over my head. I would recommend doing this as well and adjusting it as you see fit. Now to attach the sleeves, once again, you're gonna to wanna to flip your panels inside out. And sorry that this shot is so ass. I do not know why it looks so bad, but at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is that you can see what I'm doing. For the sleeve, you're going to wanna to flip it to the side that you're gonna to want to be facing out when you're actually wearing it. That's what I'm doing right here. And then once you have it on the side that you want, you're going to tuck it underneath in between the two panels all the way to, so that it's flush with the top part where the shoulders are. Because the panels that I made are so square and wide, the shoulders sort of hang off the arms. So when you try it on, it's like, kind of big but because it's kind of big it will fit you the way a baggy sweatshirt or a sweater would fit you and then once you have it in the correct spot you're just going to stitch it all the way up obviously make sure you're not stitching that hole closed or else that will not be a functioning sleeve and you will have to undo it just stitch all the way around and try to make sure that you're keeping it in the same place so that it's not moving that way you don't have any fabric that's puckering up or any fabric that's bunching in a weird way. Once you finish with all of those seams, this is how it should look on the inside. And then once you flip it inside out, it will be a nice clean edge that will look super professional once you're wearing it around town. When I attached this ribbing on the bottom of the sweater, how I made it tight, like if you can see how it's cinched at the bottom like that, I basically, well, what I did also is I attached it on the side where the seam is for the sweater so that the seam for the ribbing would also be on the side, just so that it's not in the front. Um, and then I think I skipped, like, I don't know if you can see here, but I just skipped, like, one, two, three of the chain, and then I would put another knot. I'll attach the tutorial that helped me with make attaching the ribbing to a panel of something because it was very helpful. I think in the tutorial that I watched, the girl who sh was doing the tutorial was making a balaclava, but it's the same concept for anything, basically. Like, this is just bigger ribbing than it would be on a balaclava, obviously. But yeah, I think the way, the way that I did it was I just skipped every third and then added like a row so that it gives this sort of cinched effect. For the neck hole, it was way wider before I attached the ribbing. And so just know that even if it's wide before, like, and it's not circular, that's fine because now it fits me like a turtleneck. That being said, I would recommend trying it on consistently because the first time I did this, it was extremely tight because I skipped every third the same way that I did on the bottom, which I would recommend skipping every two chains, if that makes sense. Two chains? No. Um, <laughs> I would recommend doing every second chain attaching the ribbing rather than every third because um, <laughs> there's less ribbing on here, so it's going to be... Um, less forgiving than with the bottom since it's so many more rows, but yeah, I did every second, but I had to redo this entire front section basically because it was way too tight. If you can see, I think of it on the back here, you can see that it's a little bit more stretched out looking because the front looks all nice and tight because um, 
This was one I did every second, and then this one was one I was like, oh, this is not going to fit me at all. But that's okay. You live and you learn. For those of you who are learning from me, you're welcome. And for those of you who did not watch this far and then made the same mistake, I'm sorry. Once you have finished everything else, the only thing that's left to do is weave in all of your ends. I just kind of do this randomly just to make sure that nothing comes undone, just weaving it back and forth a bunch of different times. And once you get that all nice and neat, your sweater is basically fully completed. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this tutorial guide for making this sweater was helpful. Um, and even if it's not this sweater that you want to make, hopefully this helped you in some way. Like, I feel like all of these skills you can apply to different items of clothing, etc., etc. So hopefully this video was helpful in some way, shape, or form. If you enjoyed this video, I can definitely make more like this in the future. I just realized I come home every day and then I just sit here and make things all day. So I thought, why don't I just film it? Anyway, if you enjoyed this, I can definitely make more like this in the future. This was helpful, whatever. So just let me know if you would like to see more videos like this. Thank you so much again for watching and please make sure you check out all those other tutorials I referenced. I will reference them in the video, but also check them out. I'll put them in the description box down below as well if you miss them in the video. They're extremely helpful and they'll go more in depth into each point that I covered because they do a much better job explaining it than I could and that's how they that's how I learned. So I want to give credit where credit is due. But thanks so much for watching. I'll see you maybe never. See you maybe another time. I don't know. Goodbye.